Ciao! Welcome back to Book Break. Today we are virtually traveling to Italy to look at some of the best Italian books. And Italy are having a bit of a moment. This year they became the first country ever to win both Eurovision and the men's Euros in the same year. Bit of a sore spot for some at the moment, I know, but there is clearly something in the air over there. Or something in the pizza. So, to celebrate our Italian friends, we're going to look at some of the best Italian books you might want to read this summer. The next best thing to actually visiting. And big thanks to you guys, because a lot of these recommendations actually came straight from our Italian viewers. So let's get started on the books. I will say, I'm not going to include my brilliant friend in this list, because I know you already know it. First up, Last Summer in the City by Gianfranco Caligaric. This is a cult classic in Italy that is finally being published into English for the first time this summer. It's set in the 60s and it's about a young man who leaves his family behind and heads to Rome to work but finds himself unemployed, drifting around the city in an alcoholic haze until he meets Ariana and strikes up a whirlwind relationship. This is a rediscovered classic that went through a lot to be published in the first place. It was turned down by a lot of Italian publishers. Then it kind of exploded onto the scene before instantly vanishing again and eventually becoming one of the most sought after books in secondhand bookshops and bookstalls. So a really, really interesting history to the book as well as a great book. Adua by Ajaba Shago is about a woman called Adua, an immigrant from Somalia who has lived in Rome for 40 years. She initially came seeking freedom from a very controlling father and oppressive regime, but her dreams of becoming a film star ended in shame. Now, the civil war in Somalia is over, and after her father's death means that Adua inherits the family home, she has to decide whether it's time to go home and how to take charge of her own future. Andrea Camilleri is one of Italy's most prolific writers. The 28th book in his Inspector Montalbano series is coming out posthumously later this year. So if you want to start right from the beginning of that series, go for The Shape of Water. This is where we first meet the brilliant Inspector Montalbano, who loves Italian food just as much as we do, but can solve crimes quite a lot better. For something a bit heavier, literally, The Catholic School by Eduardo Albanati is a remarkable novel that comes in at over 1,400 pages. It's based on a true crime in which three very privileged young men kidnapped and tortured two young girls, young teenage girls, exposing the violent underbelly of the Italian upper classes. In this book, Albanati goes back to the boys' time at their prestigious boys' school, San Leone Magno, in a book that blends memoir with true crime with a coming-of-age novel. Jhumpa Lahiri is interesting because she's not actually Italian herself. She is Indian-American, but she writes now in Italian because she loves the Italian language so much, which is very impressive. So Whereabouts, or Dove Mi Trovo, is a book that she wrote in Italian and then translated herself into English. And this book follows a woman's thoughts as she meanders through an Italian city, culminating in one life-changing moment. Next, I'm gonna give you kind of two in one. So The Leopard by Giuseppe Tomasi is a classic Italian book from the 50s. It's historical fiction, it's about the Italian unification. But the bonus book recommendation here is Lampedusa by Stephen Price, a book that came out last year that reimagines Tomasi's experience of writing The Leopard, the book that would go on to become his legacy. The Garden of the Vinci Contini's by Giorgio Bassani is set amongst an Italian Jewish community in the 1930s as Italy approaches the Second World War. It's very melancholy and foreboding. We watch this family isolate themselves in their beautiful garden, playing tennis and almost believing they can escape the terrible changes going on outside. Gomorra by Roberto Saviano is a non-fiction book that exposes so much about the Camorra, an Italian crime organisation, that the author was actually placed under police protection. 
this is the astonishing true story of Italy's other mafia, known to insiders as the system. So it's a really brave piece of investigative journalism and also filled with Saviano's own personal experiences growing up in Naples, where he witnessed his first murder age 14 and where violence seemed an everyday occurrence. Cabani Calling is a graphic novel by the Italian cartoonist Zero Calcare. This tells the story of his time volunteering in the Middle East and reporting on the fight against the Islamic State from the front lines. And he meets so many different fascinating people in here. It's simultaneously humorous and heartbreaking. Then there's Clash of Civilizations over an elevator in Piazza Vittoria by Amara Larkhouse. This is a bittersweet comedy slash murder mystery. It's set in a very culturally diverse apartment in the centre of Rome, and we get to meet each of the residents as they come forward to give evidence. And what emerges from this, as well as the murder mystery at the centre, is also the daily life of immigrants and what it means to live on the margins of a society. Frangipani Gardens by Leila Wadia is a story about an Indian orphan who had migrated to Italy and become a famous designer. And this book follows her on her return journey to India. So it's a story about being a migrant, about how it feels to love two countries, two cultures, two languages, and what it means to belong. Separate Rooms by Pier Vittorio Tondelli is a very sad book about grief and loss. Leo is mourning the death of his lover, Thomas, and the book is told in three movements, like a piece of music. Throughout the book, we learn about Leo and Thomas's incredible passion and love, and then follow Leo setting out on how to live a life without him. And just for a fun little bonus here, I couldn't resist including The Geometry of Pasta, because it is, after all, about Italian food. So this one was written by Jacob Kennedy, a chef best known for his regional Italian dishes at his Bocca di Lupo restaurant in London, along with Kaz Hildebrand, who is an award-winning designer. So this book is this amazing fusion of food and design. It takes you on a tour of Italy via the many, many different shapes of pasta, which each have their own history, their own story, and their own recipes, having been developed based on the flavours of local ingredients. And on that note, that has made me hungry, so let's draw this video to a close and go and eat some pasta. Do click here for more videos that travel the globe and let us know in the comments below your favourite Italian books and which country you'd like us to visit next. Arrivederci!